a 62-year-old pastor of Marathon, who goes by the name Monte Lavelle Chitty, has been accused of getting a 15-year-old girl drunk and sexually assaulting her while she was impaired. This Florida pastor recently started a dockside ministry for a boating community in Boot Key Harbor. When Monticitti and his wife were planning to retire from the mission field, they looked to the southeast region of the Sunshine State to anchor themselves. However, several weeks into attending a local church, Chitty found himself as lead pastor of First Baptist Church Marathon. Before moving to Marathon, Chitty and his wife previously served 10 years in the islands of Alaska and several years in Texas and Nevada. Now, Chitty is using his ministry experience of serving in church plants and church revitalizations to lead FBC Marathon to reach the lost in its primarily transient community. Having served in various ministry contexts and climates, he said one thing remains constant, people desperately need Christ. People need Christ, he said. Regardless of where you're serving, people need Christ. I have served in the most northwest point of the United States, of the most southeast point, and people need Christ. Well, to hear such a very affirming message of truth, reality is people need Christ. But now what is happening around the pastor is not something that would reflect the character that is Christ-like. The pastor, who also leads First Baptist of Marathon, has been charged with sexual battery of a minor, lewd and lascivious conduct, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office said. According to the police, the allegations against the pastor were first reported by an anonymous scholar who overheard the teenager telling an adult that she had been raped. The caller said the girl and her grandmother had boarded a dinghy and headed out into the harbor. As deputies attempted to find the victim, communications officers received a second call from the suspect, the pastor himself, Monte Chitty. Chitty said he believed he was about to be accused of something he wanted to get ahead of it. He said a young girl at his church had been drinking and had passed out on a couch in the library of the church. He said he helped her to lie down on the couch but did not touch her after that. Police contacted the teenager on a boat where she lives and she told them that the pastor gave her alcohol which may have been spiked. She said she immediately began to feel weak and lost consciousness. She said when she woke up, she found Chitty sexually molesting her. Investigators later found text messages between the teenager and the pastor where he made reference to having sexual relations with a girl while she was impaired. The pastor was subsequently arrested and booked into the Monroe County Detention Center. A few people believe that the pastor did not touch the girl and most people believe that the pastor actually touched the girl so it's a story of the girl against the pastor but also a lot is against the pastor so these cases like this remind me of a scripture in philippians 1 27 whatever happens conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of christ if you are a minister if you serve in the church if you serve in the body of christ or even if you don't but you work with people there are some things that we can do and practice to not allow ourselves be found in such situations just in case assuming the pastor was innocent for example you find a girl a 15 year old passed out why don't you call other church members to come help you why don't you call female attendants to come help the girl why then would you allow yourself as a pastor to be in that particular room by yourself with the girl who is passed out in such a manner because how are you going to save your skin and say you didn't do nothing who are you going to make believe you didn't do nothing that is in case you are innocent it's so important how we conduct ourselves as ministers is really important why would you place yourself in a situation where you can easily be misunderstood anyway that's my two cents on this what do you think do you think the pastor could be right that he didn't touch the girl then how about the text messages well 
Let's just be wise.